everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Today, we are going to be talking about teen dating violence with our youth panelists and in observance of Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. So who we are, we are the YWCA Golden Gate Silicon Valley. Um, we are a nonprofit organization that supports survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, and human trafficking. My name is Erica Wiley, and I am the Prevention, Education, and Community Engagement Coordinator here at YWCA. Hello, everybody. My name is Alondra Hernandez, and I'm a prevention specialist at YWCA Golden Gate Silicon Valley. Hey, y'all. Um, I'm Maggie, a prevention specialist at YWCA Golden Gate Silicon Valley. Hi, I'm Alyssa. Um, I am 16 years old, and I am a junior in high school. Hi, I'm Chloe. I am a senior in high school, and I'm 18. Hi, I'm Victoria. I'm 14 and I'm a freshman in high school. Hi, I'm V. I'm 14. I'm also a freshman in high school. Awesome. All right. Well, we're going to start off by talking about healthy and unhealthy relationships. And as we go through these, uh, these few questions, again, these types of things can apply to friendships and romantic relationships. Um, so any kind of relationship that we have in our lives, right? So what's your idea of a healthy relationship, Alyssa? Um, I think that a healthy relationship should be built on trust and then boundaries of both people should be respected and both people should feel comfortable. Yeah, what about you, V? What do you think a healthy relationship is like? Um, I agree with Alyssa, but I would also say like being not like controlling, but like know like where to like talk and not talk when they're like talk like something like that. So kind of like being able to have a conversation and you're not speaking over each other. There's like this conversation where you're both sharing things about each other and you're not stepping on anyone, right? Kind of like that. Okay, I think that's a great idea. Um, Chloe or Victoria, anything else y'all think is important in a healthy relationship? I've heard boundaries, respect. What else? Anything else? Victoria, do you guys think they've all kind of been covered? Awesome. Where do our ideas about healthy relationships come from? Where did you learn that these things were going to be important? Uh, Victoria, where did you learn about what was important in a healthy relationship? Um, I learned where these things were important from mostly movies or the media. Movies or the media. Chloe, what about you? Where did you learn about uh, relationships from? Uh, I learned from my parents and how they comment on other people's relationships. Okay, so kind of like a feedback loop of seeing things and talking about things that we're exposed to. What about you, Alyssa? Where did you get your ideas about relationships from? Um, I think like adding on to what Victoria and Chloe said also from like either like personal experiences or from like experiences of those close to you. Yeah, so what we've kind of been exposed to, right? Do you think, what do you think influences you more? The relationships that you experience that you see or the ones that you see modeled on social media and in movies? V. I feel like on in movies because like and in real life too because you when you get into a relationship you can know what to do and not what to do like learning and in movies you learn like the healthy parts and that like non-healthy parts of the relationships in the movies too so in just thinking of some movies and shows you've seen recently like you if nothing's coming to mind that's fine but the things that we are exposed to in the movies and social media do they model the epitome of a healthy relationship or are they not exactly the most healthy things? Um, Chloe, what kinds of things are we seeing in movies and TV shows when it comes to relationships? Um, most of the times is unhealthy relationships because it's more dramatic and it's kind of exciting to watch. Yeah, there needs to be that entertainment factor, right? So there's a lot of drama going on all the time. What kind of characteristics might be, you know, little flags or warning signs of an unhealthy relationship, Victoria? 
um like maybe pressuring someone or manipulating them into doing stuff mm-hmm. what do you think Alyssa what are some red flags of an unhealthy relationship um I would say like being overbearing or control like overly controlling in the relationship and also like Victoria said like manipulating one someone yeah so what about jealousy do we think that jealousy is part of a healthy relationship or part of an unhealthy relationship um Chloe I'm going to toss this one to you what do you think um I think jealousy is normal like we all experience it but whether or not like the way we deal with it is another story if we process it in a way that's you know harmful then it might cause like real issues to the relationship and how we established it with each other Mm -hmm. how might jealousy um, manifest in an unhealthy way um, v, do you have any ideas how that might happen? Um, I think like like jealousy to the point where it gets too mu- like it's too much on the person like the other person. Yeah, maybe when jealousy becomes controlling, kind of like Alyssa said, using an insecurity to manipulate someone else. Maybe jealousy isn't the most healthy in those situations. Do you feel like? When you're in a relationship, be it friendship or romantic, you should do everything together. Um, why don't you just toss me in a reaction emoji to that one? Do we think if we're in a relationship, we should do absolutely everything together? I guess there's no thumbs down emoji. So I'm gonna take the no, the silence and lack of emojis as, as a no. What about, does your partner need to know every single aspect of your life? Victoria, what do you think? Should they know everything? No, they should. Um, they shouldn't know everything. But if you feel comfortable enough, you should tell them. Yeah. What about you, Alyssa? Do you think your partner should know everything? Um, I kind of agree with what Victoria said. I feel like if you feel comfortable with sharing with your partner, that's totally fine. But you shouldn't feel pressured to tell them everything. Yeah. I think y'all are exactly right, right? It's it's about our level of comfort. It's about what we wanna share. And if we don't wanna share everything, then we don't have to, right? It's about setting those boundaries. Someone mentioned boundaries earlier, right? About what we do share and what we don't share. Now, if our boundaries do get crossed or we notice a red flag in a relationship, what can we do about it? Um, v, what do you think we can do about it? Um, I think we can talk to like an adult or like someone who we trust about it. Mm-hmm. Chloe, what do you think? What would what do you think you should do if someone crosses your boundaries? Um, I would warn them like I'm not okay with whatever happened, and if they still like continue, then I might like need some other help. Yeah, Alyssa, what about you? Um, I think definitely trying to communicate with them first, and then seeing how that goes out, and then like depending on how that ends up, like going from there. Mm-hmm. And then Victoria, let's bring it home with you. What do you think you would do if someone crossed a boundary? Um, maybe just step back and see if this is really like um, a big deal or not. Mm, so kind of a, evaluate how you're feeling and what's going on with you and then making steps from there. That's very self-reflective. I like that. So thank you all so much. We've talked a little bit right now about healthy and unhealthy relationships. And, and bringing that into the theme of, of this month, teen dating violence. Um, let's talk a little bit about teen dating violence now. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about teen dating violence. And first I wanna know, give me a thumbs up if you've heard of that term before, teen dating violence. Okay, perfect. So it seems like everybody has heard um, of that term, teen dating violence. Now, can you kind of give me an explanation of what that means to you? What is teen dating violence? Alyssa? Um, I would say teen dating violence would be like any sort of abuse in a relationship, whether that be like physical, emotional, or sexual. Yeah, definitely. Um, So those are some great examples. Can anybody else, would anybody else like to give me a few examples of what teen dating violence is or some different types of abuse. How about Victoria? Do you wanna add anything to that? 
Um, I agree with what she said, like either whether it's physical or just like not even like just verbally saying stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, Chloe or V, did you have any others that you wanted to add to that? Any different types of abuse that you've heard about before? No, okay. So before we talked about where we get our ideas about relationships from, we talked about that we see them in the movies, maybe our parents or our friends, but what about when it comes to teen dating violence? Where have we learned about that in like school or anything like that? I know we have a few um, students here who are part of our program, the YWCA. Can you just raise your hand or give me a thumbs up emoji if you are part of our program? Perfect. So Victoria and V, they are part of our tea club. So I know that you've heard about this from us, but let me ask Chloe, have you, where have you learned about this before? Have you learned about teen dating violence in school or anywhere else? Um, I learned it in social media. Okay. So maybe like just seeing posts about it? Yeah. Okay. What about you, Alyssa? Where did you first hear about teen dating violence? I think in terms of school, I think my school actually started to do like teen dating of violence awareness week last year, I believe, to bring more awareness about the topic. So I would say like um, I learned about it from there. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so now I have a statistic for you. So one in 10 high school students has been purposefully hit, slapped or physically hurt by a dating partner. Now, does this statistic surprise you, Victoria? Um, honestly, kind of, because um, I personally haven't like really heard any of that, but I wouldn't be surprised if it happened in other schools. Yeah. What about you, V? What do you think? Um, I agree with Victoria. I'm not really that surprised, but I am still a little bit because you never know what happens behind the scenes of a relationship and you don't, you never know what to expect. Yeah. Chloe, does that statistic surprise you? Yeah, definitely. It seems like it's really um, common to see around us. Okay. What about you, Alyssa? Do you think that's surprising? Yeah, I think it's a bit surprising for me, especially because I feel like we see a lot of these cases like on the media or like on TV or like social media. And then we tend to like distance ourselves from them and be like, oh, like this wouldn't happen in my life or like my friend's lives. What in reality is like pretty common. Yeah, right. Sometimes if we don't have something that um, directly affects us, sometimes it's hard to see that it's a problem or that it's even happening. Or like you said, if we see, thing in, see things in the media, I think, oh, well, you know, that's so far away from me. Um, when it comes to teen dating violence, do you think that it can happen to anyone? Uh, Victoria, what do you think? Yeah, it can totally happen to anyone. What about you, Alyssa? Do you think it can happen to anyone? Yeah, I think it could happen to anyone. Yeah, because we, we know that teen dating violence, it doesn't see race, gender, anything like that. And we know that it does happen to um, people in all communities. Now, when it comes to teen dating violence, only 33% of teens who were in an abusive relationship ever told anyone about the abuse that they were experiencing. Now, why do we think that number is so low? V, do you want to tell me why you think that is? I think it's so low because not a lot of us want to speak up about it because like the mm, the use of one in the relationship could be like blackmailing them and stuff. Yeah, maybe somebody doesn't want to say something because their partner is blackmailing them or threatening them. What do you think, Chloe? Um, they feel the societal pressure about it. They don't want to be, um, know about what happened. Like, you, like they don't want other people knowing that they've experienced the abuse. Maybe there's some, the, some shame or humiliation that comes with it just because of what they've seen in the media. That could be. Uh, Alyssa, what do you think? Yeah, um, adding on to what V and Chloe said, I think definitely one of the factors is like the stigma that exists around it. And then I also think there's a difference between like telling those close to you, for example, like your parents or like close friends. I think that also brings them a lot of pain as well versus like bringing it out in like 
the open to public, I think is also another story um, because I think like bringing it out in the open is very like emotionally draining for the survivor to do to kind of kind of like relive their experiences and all the trauma. And a lot of times, oftentimes, even when people do bring it out in the open, they don't really get like the justice that they want or they hoped for. So a lot of times I feel like it might seem pointless to do that. Yeah, thank you for that. That's a great response. Um, when it comes to young people talking to adults about teen dating violence or the relationships that they're in, do you think that that's something that's easy to do, like talk to your parents or another adult about relationships or if you're experiencing violence? Victoria, what do you think? Um, personally, for my mom and dad, it's pretty easy for me to talk to them about um, dating and like if there was ever violence, but for other people, I can see how it's like pretty hard. Yeah. B, what do you think? I agree with Victoria. Perfect. Let's do one more. Chloe, what do you think about that? Do you think it's easy to talk to adults about this subject? Uh, I agree with Victoria and V. It's definitely hard to open up to your parents about it. Awesome. Um, so now we talked about a little bit about what teen dating violence is. Do you think that other students have an understanding of what teen dating violence is or when it comes to managing relationships, like the do's and the don'ts, or what's healthy and what's not. Do you think that's something that a lot of young people are talking about or know about? Uh, Alyssa, what do you think? Um, I feel like most people probably have like some sort of an idea of what like a healthy relationship should look like or like what teen dating violence would be defined as. I feel like because there are so many gray areas in a relationship, it's very hard to like decide like what is exactly like would be classified as like toxic or not. And I feel like those are the areas where like a lot of teens might not really know about. Yeah, awesome. Um, do you think that it's helpful to have a class in school that's designated to talk about these subjects? Uh, B. Uh, yeah, I think it is helpful because not a lot of people know about it because not a lot of like schools like sh like teach about it in class and stuff. Chloe, what do you think? You think this is a necessary topic that should be talked about in schools? I think definitely because um, we do receive the information about it, but it's not very like clear, like what the each points are. Awesome. What about you, Victoria? What do you think? Um, I agree with them. It should be taught in schools because a lot of what the media is telling us nowadays is that um, toxic relationships are kind of romanticized. And I think that if there was a class that maybe they wouldn't think that way about a toxic relationship. That is a great point. Thank you, Victoria, for bringing that up because a lot of times the relationships that we see in media or social media, they are unhealthy um, behaviors, but they are romanticized. So it's really giving the wrong message to young people who can't really make that, um, tell the difference between that fantasy or the reality. So now that we've talked about teen dating violence, kind of what it is, where it's happening, we know that it can happen to anyone. Um, where are some places where we're connecting with people? Where are we connecting with people to build relationships or to continue relationships that we already have? Especially if we're thinking like right now in this past year with the pandemic, we've it's really been different how we're connecting people with people. So where are some places that we meet new people? Um, Alyssa. I think definitely on social media, especially like right now when we can't really go out to see people, I feel like social media is probably like the place that you're still staying in touch with others. Yeah, definitely a big way to stay connected with others. V, what do you think? Um, I agree with Alyssa. Um, staying, we would stay in touch on like social media and stuff. Victoria, Chloe, what do you feel about this? Yeah, I agree with them. I think social media is a big part. Okay, awesome. All right, so now we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. We're gonna talk about healthy relationships, unhealthy relationships, and social media. 
Okay, so then let's talk about social media and maybe how digital abuse can manifest. Now, by quick show of kind of like a, a head nod, do you all use social media? Yeah, <laughs> it feels like that answer is always yes. <laughs> so how old were you all when you got your first cell phone and what apps do you use? Alyssa. Okay, and then what about you, Chloe? Yeah, I'm pretty much the same with Alyssa. I also got my phone when I was 12 and I mostly use Instagram. Okay, and then Victoria? Um, I got my first phone when I was in um, fifth grade, so I think around 10 or 11-ish. Um, and the apps I mainly use are TikTok. And then Dee? I would say the same as Victoria. Like, I got my first phone in, like, fifth. And the apps I use the most would probably be, like, TikTok, Instagram, and Snapchat. Okay. All right. So then based on, I mean, you all probably had social media way longer than some of us. Uh, how important do you think social media is to you then? Chloe? Um, I think it's really important. It's like one of the only ways that I communicate with others, like my friends and stay connected. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of hard to imagine what that looked like prior to social media apps and whatnot. Victoria, what about you? Do you think social media is important to you? Um, I think like the one I'm on mostly is like TikTok. I don't really think that's much important, but if I probably didn't have Instagram, probably wouldn't know a lot about what's going on because I don't really look at the news or newspapers. So I think that Instagram is pretty important. Yeah, keeping up with current events has been way more appealing now having Instagram and all these accounts than than news groups and whatnot. And then V and then Alyssa, you can share after. Um, I think that it Instagram is more important because like you would be able to know things about like the news and things that you can see because not a lot of us look at the news and stuff. Yeah, I would agree. And then adding on to that kind of like the, I guess, more like social factor of like Instagram or like Snapchat, I think because so many people use it and spend so much time on it, it's like a way to kind of keep up with people's lives, especially your friends' lives and kind of see what they're up to and also like connect and meet with new people. Yeah, all right. So then you all sound like you navigated social media at a pretty young age. Who taught you the the kind of the do's and don'ts of social media? Like what's okay, what's not okay? And if nobody did, who would have you liked to have taught you? Uh, v. Um, I would say some of my friends that I had, like that I was friends with, taught me and also my mom. Okay, Victoria? Um, for me, it was my mom. And Chloe? For me, it was my friends. And then Alyssa? I think parents. And I, if I remember correctly, we were like given a few talks about it in middle school, I think. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and it's, it's interesting how like, we can't define a specific moment. It's kind of one of those things that people are like, learn as you go, because a lot of us are kind of learning as we went too, right? So thinking about how to navigate the internet and just, let's just think about how maybe this might influence teens' behavior online. So I wanna share a statistic with you all. And it reads, one in four teens are harassed or abused through technology. And I just wanna hear our thoughts about that. And does this surprise you? Victoria, what do you think? Um, honestly, it kind of doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I'm surprised it isn't kind of higher. Um, I see a lot of that, so I'm kind of surprised it isn't higher. And Chloe? Yeah, me, um, I agree with Victoria. Um, it's, it's definitely a pretty big issue and I, I thought the number would be higher actually. V? I agree with both Chloe and Victoria. I 
really would think that the, the number would be higher than it is. And then Alyssa? Yeah, I don't think it's surprising, but it's like pretty upsetting that like, cause one in four is pretty significant. Yeah, it's like 25%. Um, yeah, right. And so like, I know you all are talking about why it's not that surprising. And why do you think that you have that feeling towards it not being that surprising? And this could be open to any one of you that wants to share. Um, I would say that like, especially compared to if you experience something like that in person, like the statistic of getting like harassed online would definitely be higher just because I feel like it's just easier for someone to do online when you're like hiding behind a screen. Um, so that's probably one of like the reasons why the number is like pretty high. Yeah, right. That anonymous factor, people can hide behind their screen or different usernames. So then how do we think that technology is used to harass or maybe abuse another person, whether it's in a friendship or in a dating relationship? V, what do you think? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, so, how, and this one's kind of, it takes a little bit to kind of think about it, but how do we think that technology is used to harass or abuse another person, whether it's a friendship or a dating relationship? Um, I would think that like conversations on like technology could be screenshotted where it could be used to threaten people and blackmail them. Yeah, right. What about you, Chloe? Um, I think exposing other people's accounts and like correlate with their actual identity is pretty dangerous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Victoria and then Alyssa, if there's anything you want to add. Um, I agree with what they said. I also think that it's much easier, like, direct messaging them because you could just find their profile and, like, you don't have to find their number. Yeah. And I think another thing might be, like, location, like, keeping it on and, like, just knowing where someone is constantly. Yeah, so when we go talk to our students, oftentimes we tell them that it can be Somebody might be forcing someone to share their location. Maybe they're sexting or sending up unwanted um, explicit photos. And, or maybe a constant, just a constant check-in, right? Where now technology can be used as a tool to facilitate that unhealthy behavior, unhealthy relationship. So do we think that sexting is something that young people are participating in? Victoria. Um, I, yeah, I totally think that a lot of people are participating in that, um, whether you're receiving or sending it to people. And then Chloe? Yeah, I think the same with Victoria. And then Alyssa and V. Yeah, I agree. I think people are participating in it. I agree. I think that people are participating it, in it, especially now since we're all like not out and stuff. Yeah, right. And that that could be used to as kind of like a wage, right? Say someone's in a partnership and they're like, oh, I don't get to see you often. And then they try to kind of like get a person to share photos that way. Um, so yeah, definitely, I think you all are right. So we know there's ways based on what we talked about that people can get harassed or abused online. But do we think that people ever portray those parts of maybe their relationships, the not so pretty parts? You can give me a yes or no. Like, do we think that people oftentimes just maybe put only the good aspects? Yeah. So thinking about that, let's think about some of these hashtags and just like things that I've seen on like TikTok or Instagram of um, just like these relationship goals idea, right? How do we think do we think that that influences the way that we see our relationships? Alyssa, what do we think? Yeah, I think definitely. Um, I think for one, it kind of sets unrealistic expectations and standards of what a relationship should look like. And then when people see these like posts on social media, it kind of if their relationships aren't going like as well as these pictures of others seem, it probably makes them feel bad about themselves. Chloe? Yeah, I agree with Alyssa. I think it, it um, 
kind of influence our image of what a healthy relationship should be? And Victoria? Yeah, I agree with what they said that, um, like, it does affect it a lot and it's what you think like a healthy relationship should be. But at the same time, like if there was negatives of a relationship and they put it online, I don't think that it would be like, I don't think it'd be like normal because it's kind of like you're putting everything out there. All right, and then B. Yeah, I agree with Chloe or San Victoria. All yeah, right. So, I mean, there might, there's obviously reasons why people maybe don't show all the, the whole, you know, kind of relationship and only the highlights. Um, but how do we feel about that hashtag? Just like some general thoughts, like when we see posts that use those hashtags or people posting about like, this is how you're supposed to treat somebody, right? I've just seen a lot of those. What do we, what are our initial thoughts when we see those? Do we roll our eyes? Do we think that's super cute? What do we think, Alyssa? I think like looking on the more positive side, I feel like those make me happy when I see them because it's like at least, you know, someone's like experiencing a very happy relationship and you're like happy for them. And Chloe? Yeah, I feel the same with Alyssa. I think it's, it's definitely cute when others share their happiness, but um, whether or not like we, like me as individual might be the same happiness of doing the same thing as them is another story so yeah yeah and victoria um yeah i agree with them like you kind of feel happy for them but at the same time it's kind of like <laughs> yuck a little too much pd <laughs> and then v yeah i totally agree with Alyssa, chloe and victoria because like it's kind of cute um, but at the same time, it's kind of like cringy to see because not everybody's relationship is like that. Yeah, right. And also, it, I, to me, it starts to feel kind of like the movies. Like we talked about media, right? And how media influences our thoughts. So I feel like those videos start to do that where if you don't have this in your relationship, then you think there's something wrong with my relationship. Do you all share that same sentiment? No. All right, so kind of moving away from dating relationships, but now just more kind of like your online relationships now, especially in a pandemic, everything's basically online, right? So how do you stay connected now that the pandemic has created a more virtual world? And do you feel exhausted about this constant kind of social connection considering that everything's online now? Alyssa? I think staying connected is definitely a lot harder now um, that we're all at home and we can't see each other. I feel like because you have to make like an extra effort to kind of reach out to people when like usually you could just like talk to people at school or like when you see them. Um, and for me personally, I definitely feel very <laughs> exhausted from like, uh, I guess just like the social media and like feeling the need to stay connected with people through social media. Yeah. Yeah. And then Chloe. Yeah, I, I agree with Elisa. I think it's, it's definitely, it, it gets tiring sometimes when like conversations keep going on and going on and yeah. <laughs> and Victoria. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's really tiring. Like, you know, you kind of like have to like keep talking to them because you can't just stop and be like, oh, see you tomorrow, you, you know? And also like, it's kind of like the need to like keep looking to see if they like texted you back and like, it's kind of tiring always having to look at your phone. Mm -hmm. Nambi? Yeah, I agree with them. Um, I also think that it's kind of good because then you also like know like the people that you shouldn't be friends with and stuff. Yeah, and right. like it is tiring too. Yeah, so it can get a bit exhausting, especially since everything we interact with is online now. So going back to um, being drained of, of having this constant uh, connection with online, have you all been able during this um, virtual space with virtual learning, have you all been able to meet new friends online? Uh, Chloe. 
I mean, definitely not. It, it feels really distant from them, but yeah. Yeah, okay. What about you, Alyssa? No new friends. No new friends? Okay, Victoria? Um, I see a lot of people making new friends, but it's kind of weird and awkward, so I don't make any friends either. Okay, V, what about you? I would say kind of, but it's also really hard, but I I would really just make friends through like other friends and stuff and start talking to people. Yeah. Now, when you're making new friends, let's say you're able to make some new friends in this virtual space, um, how would you go about meeting them? Would you feel comfortable meeting them like in person? Would you set up some like ground rules, how would you safely meet new people online? Victoria. Um, for the first thing, cause I have like a few I made. Um, the first thing is like, I would think, do I really trust them? And I guess like I could say I do, but I don't still think I wouldn't feel comfortable meeting them in person. Okay, Alyssa, what about you? I feel like I would probably keep it to like online just like texting and maybe like calling facetiming but i don't think i'd feel very comfortable like meeting up with them in person v how would you feel about meeting in person uh i agree with both the Lisa and victoria i feel like it's not really comfortable like to be meeting up with people especially because you don't really know them that well so i would just keep it to like messaging and facetiming and stuff Okay, Chloe, what about you? Yeah, I mean, I agree with all of them. I think it's, it's it gets kind of sus when you try to like arrange a meetup with like someone you only know from online. Yeah, it could be a little scary, right? I mean, it, the thing is, you know, we're not going to school. So at least when you're going to school, you're able to see that person and then build that relationship. Um, and this virtual space is a little different. We want to make sure, okay, well, if we're meeting, you know, where are we meeting? Are we going to a public place? Do our parents know, you know, where we're at? Like, what are some safety tips that we can do to ensure that we're safe, you know, meeting this new friend? Um, when we talked about the hashtag relationship goals, I just want to ask you this question. Do you think that that hashtag relationship goals can affect somebody who's experiencing violence? So let's say they're in you know, a violent relationship, but yet their hashtag, you know, relationship goals, everything that they put out is, you know, happy. Do you think that can affect somebody um, reporting or telling another person about the abuse that they're experiencing? Chloe, I mean, sorry, Alyssa, what do you think? Yeah, I think so, probably, because there's such, like, in that situation, there's such, like, a huge disparity between what's going on in their life versus what they're seeing on social media. So I think that would definitely influence, like, how they're perceiving their own relationship. Yeah, and do you think that that um, could affect the way that people react to somebody, to a survivor coming forward and letting them know the abuse that they're experiencing, Victoria? Yeah. Chloe, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think yes, because like the person that they open up to might be like really surprised and question that person who like finally had the courage to open up and feel pressure. Yeah. So what do you think are some ways that we can support a survivor? So say even if they have been doing the hashtag relationship goals, and they come to us and let us know that actually they're experiencing this abuse, what are some things that we can do to support that person? V? I think maybe like talk to them, become their friends, but not like talk too much about it because they could be sensitive about that topic and stuff. Yeah, Alyssa, what do you think we could do? I think definitely believing them, first of all. And then um, next, I think just giving them space to kind of talk or share about what they want to and support them how like they kind of want you to. Yeah, those are both great responses. So now we're gonna go into what it really means to be an upstander. Um, we've talked about healthy, unhealthy relationships. We've talked about teen dating violence, you know, what it is, how it can happen online. 
where we see some of these unhealthy characteristics like in social media and movies. So have you ever experienced or seen online harassment happen, uh, Victoria? Yeah, um, probably like, honestly, maybe on the daily. Yeah. What about you, Chloe? Have you seen online harassment? Um, not really, actually. I guess I just don't keep track of it. Okay, yeah. Uh, v, what about you? Yeah, I agree with Victoria. I do see it like basically on the daily. Okay, Alyssa? Yeah, I also see it a lot. I just think about that when you when we have the statistic, the one in four um, teens being harassed online, and it seems like the general response was you're surprised that it wasn't actually higher. And I was thinking, well, it could be, well, maybe you know people aren't reporting that this is happening to them. Do you think that it's easy for somebody to report that they're being cyberbullied or harassed online, V? I think it's kind of hard, especially because like it's online and a lot of people can see it, but not a lot of people do anything about it. So like, so. yeah, Chloe, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with V. When others keep silence about that kind of thing, you kind of lose confident in like the situation being wrong yeah so if we if we're seeing this online harassment maybe we're seeing somebody um being bullied or we come across a hate page on somebody what are some things that we can do like how can we help prevent or help someone experiencing online harassment Alyssa, what do you think um, I think one way is like if it's like an account, like just report it or and then also like ask people, you know, to report it. Yeah, right. We can always report to the social media app. Victoria, what do you think we can do? Um, I agree with Alyssa. I also think you can ask the person if they need any help or um, just comfort them a little bit. That is, yes, um, I really love that response because it's really important. We want to report it, right? We want to, you know, get it taken down. But at the same time, it's so important to check in with a person that's experiencing this harassment. You know, somebody who's experiencing harassment, their world can feel really small. So just that, you know, by simply checking in saying, hey, are you okay? Or, you know, I don't agree with this can mean, um, mean the world to them. Um, so now what about... We kind of talked about this already, if, if someone told you um, that they were in an abusive relationship. Um, do you think that it's important, like how can we get help for somebody if they were in an abusive relationship and they've come to you and they said, hey, you know, this is happening. I'm not really sure what to do. What would be some tools or some advice that you can give them? Uh, Alyssa? Um, I feel like kind of guiding them through it not necessarily like telling them exactly what to do because ultimately it is their choice and it's like very hard to get out of a, an abusive relationship but I feel like just being there to kind of support them and um, tell them that like you like kind of like agree with their choices what they're doing and like try to guide them through it awesome uh, V what, what what would you do um, I agree with Alyssa. I would like guide them through it and like talk to them about it and make sure like they're okay and stuff. Now, is it really, um, it's kind of a hard thing to do, right? Sometimes we don't, we're not really sure what to do. Um, we're not really sure how to help our friends. So if you didn't know what to do, who could you talk to about this? Where could you go to get some help? Chloe? Um, I think friends are definitely good company in terms of this kind of issue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alyssa, what do you think? I think like in terms of like trust, you would probably, it'd probably be like friends and then maybe parents if you're comfortable. And then I know there's also like schools, um, some schools offer like resources and also like adults that you can go to. Yeah. Awesome. Um. So there are some, some barriers to, to being an upstander or to intervening in a situation of harm. Um, why do you think that some people might not want to help out? Like maybe somebody sees some online harassment or they see somebody being bullied in person. Why do you think it's hard to be that upstander and step up and say something? 
V, what do you think? I think maybe because they don't know what to do exactly or like they're scared that it's going to also happen to them at the same time. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes we don't know what we can do. We see something happening. We want to help, but we're really not sure how to help that person. Uh, Chloe, what do you think? I think, yeah, definitely. I agree with all of them. <clears throat> Victoria, Alyssa, did you want to add anything? No, I agree with what they said. So again, do you think this is an important conversation to have in school talking about like how we help out um, our peers or how we can intervene in situations of harm? Do you think this is an important topic to discuss, Alyssa? Yeah, definitely. I think we get like a lot of information from schools. So I think it is like a really good place to have these conversations. Awesome. V, what about you? Yeah, I agree with Alyssa. I think it could be talked about and like on ways to help. Okay. Chloe or Victoria, did you want to add anything? Okay, awesome. So now as we're, we're closing out, we're finishing up the questions here. Um, I just want to ask you this. What do you think your community or your school can do to help prevent teen dating violence? Victoria, what do you think? Definitely speak out um, about it. Um, well, I haven't really been in high school that much, um, so I don't really know how um, Piedmont goes about it, but knowing that in middle school, because it does probably happen there too, that they should speak out about it a lot more. Awesome, thank you. Chloe, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I think schools should um, just give more kind of information to students about like the available resources that they can go to and the basic key points about like what is being harmful and yeah. Alyssa, how do you feel? Yeah, I agree. And then adding on to that, I think also holding people accountable, like holding perpetrators accountable because I think there are many cases where when people speak out, it kind of just gets brushed over and no action kind of gets taken. I think that's incredibly discouraging and like just bad. Yeah, so what kind of message is that sending young people when we see that perpetrators aren't being held accountable for their actions? Uh, what kind of message is that sending, Alyssa? I think it's kind of just saying that like their actions, like it's okay to do those things that they're doing and it doesn't really matter when in reality, like like that's definitely not true. Right, and then what kind of message do you think that's sending um, the survivor, Victoria? Can you repeat that? Sure, that's okay. Um, if perpetrators aren't being held accountable for their actions, um, what kind of message is that sending to survivors? Um, it kind of sounds like they don't matter or they're not being heard. Yeah, right. So it's important that we have these conversations, right, and change that narrative. Um, so we are showing that we do support survivors and we are believing them. Um, now, our last, so your last question, um, what are some things that adults can do to support youth experiencing teen dating violence? Or what are some uh, things that you want adults to know when it comes to teen dating violence, young people in romantic relationships, what are some things that you think are important for us adults to know? V? Um, I think that they should like support you and not judge what happens, like give us like information that we're gonna need, like especially if something's happening in a relationship. Awesome, that's great advice. Chloe? Yeah, I think adults should be um, more aware and able to realize that like they need to be calm about this kind of issue and be supportive, be acceptable. Yeah. Awesome, thank you. Alyssa, what do you think? Um, I feel like support rather than criticize. And I think a factor that might play into that is kind of like cultural differences, especially for people around here. Um, I think that definitely plays like a big role in like kind of maybe like a 
gap, I guess. I don't know if that's the right word between like um, teens and their parents around this area. Yeah, maybe um, providing some more education for parents on this topic, because maybe parents haven't talked, you know, haven't heard about what healthy relationships are and, and, you know, haven't had this in school. So maybe bridging that gap in the, in the conversation. Awesome. Victoria, what do you think? Um, I think that, like, I agree with them. They should just support and not criticize or blame it on something else. Well, this was a very um, enlightening. Like I am just so happy to listen to all of you uh, with your answers and really tell us some of the things that you're you know, dealing with and your opinions. It just means so much um, to all of us. So I just wanted to say thank you for participating and being here. Um, we really appreciate that. So thank you so much, everyone.